it's almost surely a binary search. As in, almost surely you'll be able to do it with a binary search problem, with a binary search solution. So yeah, any ideas in, on how to proceed among those who have not seen the problem? Okay, what he's saying is, uh, he's saying a method on how to find it assuming you are given a length L. So uh, uh, how you would go about solving a problem using binary searches, uh, let's say you want to compute an answer, you will say, you will ask if is x feasible, this x feasible, if x is fe and of course you must prove that is, uh, this is feasible function should be such that if x is feasible then x plus 1 should be feasible or x, if x is feasible x minus 1 should be feasible as this case, in this case. So uh, yeah what he says is uh, I'd let x be the given length and I want to check if, ca uh, if I can allocate c cows on this with uh, with x being the minimum distance. How I would go about doing that is, I can without loss of generality assume that the first bond is always occupied. That is, if there is a solution, I can of course take, let's say there is a solution like this in which the first bond is not occupied, I can take the uh, the first occupied bond and move him here and not change the minimum. It will only increase or make the minimum constant. It will not, uh, it will not reduce the minimum. So, I, so given x, what I do is I, I of course allocate one of c cows to the first bond, and now I go forward and each time my distance gets greater than x, I allocate a cow there. I allocate a cow there. So by doing so, and I, I reduce my count c, and I, uh, and I reduce my count c, and I check whether such an allocation is possible. This everyone convinced that if there exists an allocation. This greedy strategy will also find an allocation. That is, I'll go over what I do for a given value x. I allocate 1 at 0, then I keep a count of wh what my previous allocated bond is and what my current bond is. If my current bond's distance minus the previous allocated bond's distance is greater than or equal to x, I allocate it there and then I go forward. So, my question is if there exists a solution in which, if there, if uh, there exists an allocation in which of x, this will also, f my uh, claim is if there exists an allocation with minimum distance x, this algorithm will also produce an allocation. Or might not be the same, but will produce an allocation. Is everyone convinced with that? Is everyone not convinced with the... Uh, okay, uh, so you have to allocate it for a given distance x. All you have to do is make an allocation for a given distance x. So, I, as I said, we can of course prove that the first element is not allocated, uh, is allocated. So, now what I do is, I go forward and I find, I find the first b uh, bond such that the distance between the previous allocated and this is greater than x. I put a cow there. Then I, of course, then I, I again do the same step in which I find the first bond where the previous is greater than or equal to x. I again put a cow there. So, if there exists a solution, you can of course prove that, like let S be a solution in which the sequence is x1, x2 up to xc. x1 can be mapped to a0 which we have already proved and uh, this is in increasing order. X, x2 will be, will be x less than or equal to x1 plus x, x will be greater than or equal to x1 plus x. So, before I reach x2 or at least when I reach x2, I will have my next solution. So my algorithm will fi find x2 and when I find x2, x3 will be less than or equal to x2 plus x. So before or at least when I reach x3, I will find, so I, I will surely find a solution which which could be better than this, but I will surely find a solution if there exists, there exists a sequence x1 to xc. So that, so, so this is a solution to it. Go to the next slide. You can try accepting. Uh, you can try getting this problem accepted on this uh, judge. I'll be on the judge. I think the I removed the link, so uh, I'll be adding this problem shortly on on that contest, and you can try ac getting it accepted. So yeah, I think I've discussed the rule of thumb, and uh, yeah, w the definition of predicate. Please note that predicate here is of the form true, 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 and then false. That is. 
for x equal to 0 of course it works i can allocate everything to one bond for x equal to 1 it might or might not work depending on uh, what the uh, x coordinates are so if i can allocate for a length l i can allocate for a length l minus 1 i can so the predicate is not the predicate that we discussed in uh, in our binary search definition it's a predicate which returns true 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 and then false and you are asked to compute the last value where it is true so one way to do it is binary search for the first value where it is false and then do a minus 1 or you can write I, I would say that you try writing a co writing code for finding the last value where it is true without inverting the predicate w by using the same predicate that we discussed here, which will probably give you an idea about infinite loops and and such. Okay, uh, other problems that you can try are not a triangle on spodge and subs on spodge. Both are fairly basic. Binary search is. I, either binary search is used as uh, a sub-problem in a, in a much bigger problem or these problems are very easy to identify because what you, what you have to do is assume you are asked for an answer what you must prove is if answer exists then answer plus one should also satisfy the conditions or answer minus one should also satisfy the condition then you must find a method in which given an answer is it feasible or not okay, means which returns whether it is feasible or not for a given answer so yeah, uh, please try to solve this and we'll go to our next topic. So uh, this is how the graph of modulus x minus 1 looks like, which will be 1 minus x until this and then x minus 1 after x equal to 1. So the idea means what a unimodal function is, a function such that it is strictly in decreasing until a constant m and then it is strictly increasing or the other way around. A function which is strictly increasing until a constant m and then and then strictly decreasing. So uh, you can of course see that this is a unimodal function. That is, uh, uh, as x increases, it first the value of function first decreases, reaches zero, and then increases. Reaches zero is not, uh, of course, not necessary for a unimodal function. So what is the objective of ternary search? You are you the problem statement for ternary search is you are given a unimodal function which may not be continuous. Your function could look like this. That is, it could look yeah. like this and please note that this is also a unimodal function although it is not continuous. That is, of course it is not defined at this point but this is also not continuous. Uh, so you are given a unimodal function and you have to find a minima or maxima in that unimodal function. The objective of ternary search is to find a minima or maxima for a given unimodal function. So. Uh, and uh, the definition of unimodal, if you go by wiki, back by one second. This uh, a function is unimodal for some value m if it is monotonically increasing for less than or equal to m and decreasing for greater than or equal to m. Uh, uh, the maximum value in this case would be at f of m, decreasing until m, and uh, or or there is no maxima. I mean, it either. Ex uh, please note that a horizontal line is also unimodal, is considered unimodal by the boundary case because it's not decreasing and not increasing. Okay, this is a quadratic function x minus 4 into x minus 5, which is unimodal. Can everyone see this function's graph? Okay, so this is again unimodal. We have a, we have a minima here and it, it decreases. This is a parabola, so it decreases until minima and then it increases. So, uh, what is ternary search? Okay, uh, how many of you are familiar with ternary search? Okay. Okay, so, can you describe ternary search? So, in case of the binary search, uh, the function looks like monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. Mm -hmm. So, in that, uh, based on the mid value, we will be able to uh, identify in which part of the our search the result will, will be in the first half or the second half. Okay. So similarly, if the function is a parabola, so based on uh, taking two middle points, we should be able to identify which part our uh, middle point right. uh, lowest point would be. All right. Yeah. So basically, we will do three, three halves. Okay. So what he says is we divide the search space into three different places and we uh, recurse into a smaller search space, which in turn research is two-third, approximately two-third the search space. So 
it is a divide and conquer algorithm because we divide it, we divide it, and then we remove one part completely. Uh, divides the search space into three domains, and then proceeds with a problem of problem with search space approximately two thirds the size. So I'll give an example of how we do turn research on let's say this this curve. Let's assume that I know for granted that my minima lies between this position which I call as low and this position that which I call as high. Can everyone see this? Uh, can the last guy see this? Okay. Uh, so we are given a curve like this which is continuous at this point, means we are assuming that it's continuous and you must find this value where it attains minimum. So for which as he says I define two pointers. I, I I divide this segment into one in one is to three ratio. So I define two pointers. Let's call this as I call the first point as mid one, and second point as mid two. So okay. So I have so I have low. I have high in binary search. I had one mid. In turn research now I have two mids. Mid one and mid two. Uh, I compute f1 equal to f of mid 1 and f2 equal to f of mid 2 which is f1 would be this and f2 unfortunately I'll use a mid let this be mid 2 just for the sake of clear lines this is f2 and this is f1 so given the values of f1 and f2 can you can you tell which uh, that is the three I have a region here I have the second region here I have the third region here which of the following regions will I not will I be able to ignore by just comparing F1 and F2 means uh, that is the idea is to compare F1 and F2 if F1 less than F2 I'd be ignoring a region and if F1 greater than F2 I would be ignoring a region so let's take the first case which is F1 less than uh, f1 less than f2 which is this case so I have f2 here I know that f2 is on to the right of f1 and I know that f1 is less than f2 so f1 could have probably be been here also so that is uh, then also f1 would have been less that is if I had a minima like this and if it went this way and if my f1 was here then I could not uh, that is I cannot move I cannot ignore one region completely because minima could have existed in region 1 is everyone clear about that so if f1 is less than f2 and I'm, compu I'm and I'm computing the minima I can reduce my high to mid 2 that is uh, in fact each time I write turn research I just uh, visualize the, of the following diagram and then if f1 is less than f2 uh, this can okay if f1 is less than f2 what essentially happens is the mid one the possible value possible locations of mid one is from here till here means the easiest way to visualize that is possible val location of mid one is from here till here so I of course cannot move the bound based on mid one I can only move the bound based on mid two if f1 is greater than f2 which I will make a new diagram which is much shorter. I have my F1 here. I have my F mid 2 here. So this is a case where F1 and this is F2. F1 is greater than F2. When F1 is greater than F2, the same logic applies but in a symmetrical sense. I can not be sure whether mid 2 is on to on the left of my minima or on the right of my minima what I can be sure is that because f2 is less there exists a minima in the direction of f2 so I can at least go I can set my low I can set my low to mid 1 uh, turn research is considered a medium to advanced level tool so I think it's a fairly nice tool to learn uh, is anyone not you are not clear with? Uh, no. uh, if suppose we have a straight line. All right. In that case, f1 will be equal to f2. Okay. So in this case, which part will have to? Uh, you can move anyways. Uh, anyways. 
see uh, that is let's just assume it's not a straight line and let's just assume that unfortunately my search uh, comes like this in which case I can either move it this way or I can move it this way both ways the invariant will hold that is uh, I just did not consider the case at this point so there is just mainly used for doubles if it is used for integers extra precision care must be taken uh, you cannot go beyond a that is because you're dividing it into a search space of length uh, two-thirds you cannot have a search space that is once you hit 